Professor Tribe, thank you very much for joining us today. I am so eager to hear you about this. I've read your new piece. Uh, explain what you've changed your mind about and what you now believe the president can do. Thank you, Lawrence. What I changed my mind about is not the Constitution, not the debt ceiling. What I've changed my mind about is what is the right question to ask? I used to think the right question was whether the president has special power to borrow without congressional permission. The answer was no. Does he have power to impose taxes without congressional permission? The answer is no. Does he have the power of a one-person Supreme Court to strike down an act of Congress? The answer is no. But the real question isn't what powers does the president have? It is what duties does the president have? Does the president have a duty to execute all the laws of the United States, the ones that Congress passed telling him to spend money? He does have that duty. The question then becomes, does Congress have the power to override that duty by confronting the president with an impossible choice, by telling the president, look, we have told you to spend this money. You've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution, to enforce all the laws, but we won't let you do it because we've got you over a barrel. We're not going to raise this ceiling, which serves no function at all, unless you stiff some of the people who are owed money by the United States, maybe veterans, maybe hospitals, maybe Social Security recipients, maybe pension funds and bondholders. Well, the president doesn't really have the authority to stiff those people because the 14th Amendment automatically says that the public debt of the United States lawfully incurred shall not be questioned. So even if the president is pushed into a corner by Congress and replaces some of the obligations that we have to these various creditors with IOUs, because there will be IOUs. He can't permanently cancel our debts. The debt ceiling will still be breached. There is nothing the president can do to avoid that consequence. So what I suggest that he has to do is simply look the other way, not pay attention to this impossible thing that Congress has asked him to do, follow his oath, enforce all the laws, very much like what Abraham Lincoln did in 1861 when he had a choice. He could either enforce the law creating habeas corpus and let the Union army get decimated and let the Union go to pieces and let all our laws be violated, or he could temporarily suspend habeas corpus so that all the laws would not be broken. He chose the latter the lesser of two evils. That precedent, coupled with the right framing of the question, led me to decide that what you found convincing in 2011, what I guess President Obama agreed to do in 2011, was just wait, hope that Speaker Boehner would back down. He did. We don't know if McCarthy will back down. It seems to me that now you've got to be very careful about putting the right question. So that's how I changed my position. I don't think the president is a one-man Supreme Court. I don't think he mm -hmm. has the power of the purse, but he's got to execute the laws that Congress passed. And there's this one law that it passed that he can't possibly execute unless he defeats all the others. And that is not a viable option. There's another... Uh duty uh, uh, and authority, uh, uh, let me put it this way, uh, an authority the president doesn't have, which is if you get to uh, crash through the limit on the debt ceiling, the president doesn't have any clear legal authority to decide what bills to pay. There's the, the, the laws yeah. don't give him any options whatsoever. So, so the choice would be pay zero, pay absolutely no bills, or pay all bills. There, there is no other right. authority he, at that moment. He, right. He has no 
line item veto. The yeah. Supreme Court in 1998 held that the president can't pick and choose among the laws that he's going to execute, among the bills that he's going to pay, and giving him that power, which the Supreme Court has said Congress can't do, is itself unconstitutional. As a lawsuit that was filed by 75,000 federal employees today uh, in Boston argues, you can't give the president the power to pick and choose mm -hmm. willy-nilly, arbitrarily, I'm going to pay you but not you. That kind of thing uh, is not permissible. Congress has to prioritize. It can't put that on the president. So you're right. That's an additional argument. It's an argument about the separation of powers and about the impermissibility of giving the president a line item veto. Uh, you've convinced me. Uh, you had me convinced in 2011 when I read that piece. Uh, but the, the thing about the debt ceiling is everyone has changed their mind about this and the way it operates over time because, because of so many of the dynamics around it have changed. And so uh, the, the, this, you're, you're thinking about the duty now has focused it in, in the way that now makes complete sense to me. 